Okay, stand by for another rehearsal. Let's go to one. Four cards, take two. And action. The eyes were watching Gummy Bear. It's a romantic comedy. It's a lighthearted look at Ivy League University life for black students of various backgrounds. And what I thought would be different about this story is showing these black kids at a white school who are happy, enjoying themselves, and living life to the fullest. They have the same problems and issues like anyone else, and they have a story that we can all relate to. It has its funny moments. It shows growth in the two main characters. I was really impressed at how they could, you know, tackle such deep, deep content with such humor. It had a lot of realistic characteristics as far as how a group of friends really interact. And I just thought it had a really good story and there was a lot of love amongst the characters. This is what our parents labored for. They worked so hard and endured so much that so that we could enjoy life to the fullest. And that's what this story should represent. Right here, and this is exactly where we want to be for the day. Okay. The director, Rafi, read the script and knew what he could do with it and met with Chris, and the decision was made. Guys, let's, let's get a whole uh, rehearsal hey guys, of everything. Rafi, as a director, he relies a lot on imagery. He describes vividly what he sees so that you can see it versus, you know, playing it out for you. He learns his actors, he knows what he needs to say to the actors to get what he needs from them at that moment. He's got a wonderful free spirit and he's very open. It's, he's trying so hard out here that it's like, you know, gotta get that, you gotta, you can get that. Yeah, yeah, cool. You feel like you're really a part of this process with him rather than him just telling you, okay, this is Mark 1, this is Mark 2, and that's it. It's more so like, all right, we're on this journey together and it's really, it's really good. It's really good to work with him. Dale represents to me a character who's near and dear in my heart because it's that person who wants to do the right thing, sort of has this romantic notion of what love should be like and what his life should be like, but he's also torn by the fact that he's an immature young man who wants to do the things that immature young men want to do. He is not thinking about like a long-term commitment and whatever opportunity he can get to have a little fun with another woman, he sees no problem with it. Laura represents to me that sort of ideal, strong, young, intelligent black woman who challenges us to be better people. She's really strong, smart, and witty, but she has like this femininity to her and this softness to her that you can still see that she's struggling with the fact that she still loves this guy. Del and Laura have what is perceived as the perfect relationship. You know, it's what, sophomore year of college, they meet, they get on well, there's a true love. And I think as the story progresses, you just kind of find out that Laura's trying to push Dell to like be true to himself about what he wants to do with his life. You know, I think every young man has sort of been there a transitional period in their life. They're not quite sure how to, what the next step is or even how to take it or get there. And the sad part about it is that Dell doesn't have the courage to really stand on his own feet and take that opportunity to really nourish the gift that he's given. I got it. What you need to do is get her pregnant. Sean is a loud talking, sarcastic, Southern gentleman. <laughs> the relationship between Sean and Dell is your, your classic bosom buddy, partner in crime story. I mean, these guys have been friends from day one, freshman year. He is the life of the party, but then he also can hold a business meeting and give you all the information that you need. He's the first at the party, the last one to leave, but then he gets like straight A's and we can't figure out what the hell he was doing to get those straight A's. What type of sick, twisted feminist logic got you advocating a woman sleep with their father? The only thing I'm advocating is a woman's right to choose. That's what I'm saying. Brigitte is a very privileged young lady. She's the top of her class. She's very assertive. She's very confident. And she knows herself. She's figured herself out. She's not that, you know, college senior still wondering, like, what am I going to do with my life? And she's kind of like my right-hand girl in the sense of if I have a problem, it becomes our problem. Through the yin and yang of one another. Yeah.
It's amazing to watch the film transform from something I, I doodled with 10 years ago and worked on over time and to finally put in the hands of actors and a director and see it come to life. Working here for the past few days has been like such a dream. It's been great to be surrounded by this great group of people with such amazing energy. I'm so excited to be here shooting this film. It's been a labor of love. It's been an amazing experience. I got to meet and work with an amazing group of people and I can't wait to see it on the screen. As soon as we wrap this film, we want to put it out there at all the, all the big festivals and see where it can go from there. Beautiful. Moving on.